In this video, we'll look at one of the features added in the version 2 update, the ability to sync two BR1600s together via MIDI. Prior to version 2, the BR1600 had the ability to sync to external equipment via MIDI, but it was limited to the BR1600 being the master and being the one controlling the tempo and song position. With version 2 came the ability for the BR1600 to function as a slave and be controlled by an external MIDI device. This also meant that two BR1600s could be linked together and run in sync. This doubles the capacity, allowing up to 16 tracks to be recorded simultaneously across the two recorders. According to BOSS, this also equates to 32 tracks of playback. However, that's not strictly true. An audio channel is a single mono discrete audio signal. A track is a container for audio and can contain any number of audio channels. This is what BOSS is actually referring to instead of tracks. A stereo track is one track which contains two channels, similar to the way a cassette tape has two channels, a left and a right, with one stereo audio track per side. A 5.1 audio track contains six mono audio channels. The way the channels are arranged on the BR1600 is as eight single and four linked pairs. We can confirm that a linked pair is indeed two individual channels. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. By copying the audio from a stereo pair to a set of two mono channels. Left, 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 right, 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 left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. You can add audio to a channel on the BR1600 in one of three ways. Record or bounce directly to it. Use the copy and move editing functions or import the audio. If you use a stereo linked pair of channels for two individual signals, there are a few issues you'll face. There is only one track arm button per pair, so you can't record to one channel at a time. You can't play either of the linked channels individually, and there is no option to export them separately either. There is no way to independently control the volume of each channel. You can't use compression, EQ, or effects on the individual channels and the channels are panned hard left and hard right, and unlike a regular stereo pan control, where if you pan to one side, the opposite side is reduced in volume, the pan control on the BOSS operates in a different way. Left, right, 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 so although you can record 16 discrete channels of audio to the BR1600, it is, for all intents and purposes, a 12-track recorder. In practice, it's very unlikely that you'll run out of tracks for a standard song production, even one with 50 or more tracks. But that leads us into the other topic for today, which is how to expand the BR1600's capacity by linking two of them together. As well as another BR1600, the BR8, 532, 864, 900, 1180, and 1200 can also be synced with the BR1600. When you are using two BR1600s, one is set to master and the other to slave. When connecting with any of the other BR series recorders, the BR1600 should be set as the slave. For this test, I'll use two BR1600s with a different demo song on each, so we can clearly hear which is which. Sugar. 
I'll set the one with the sticker as the master. To connect two BR1600s, run a MIDI cable from the out on the master to the in on the slave machine. To set up the BR1600 as the slave, go into the Utility menu under Sync and set MTC Slave to On. For the master, in the Utility Sync menu, set Sync Generator to MTC. According to Roland's guide on how to sync two BR1600s, the audio connections need to be made as follows. Connect a coax cable from the digital out on the slave into the digital in on the master. On the master machine, go to the utility system menu and set the digital in assign to input. Press the multi-track button on the top left of the front panel so the button is illuminated. Your two BR1600s are now set up to operate together. All audio from the slave BR1600 will be sent to and monitored by the BR1600 master. Let's test it out. We should hear both demo songs played at the same time through our monitors. Okay, so that clearly doesn't work. Don't! It seems that Roland never actually tested the functionality of this update because it simply doesn't work. If you just connect two BR1600s via MIDI and press play on the master, then the slave will sync as it should. If you just connect the digital out on one BR1600 to the digital in on another, you can transfer digital audio between the two. But as soon as you enable digital in on a BR1600 that is set as the master for MIDI sync, Don't! strangely, this doesn't happen if you have the BR1600 synced to a laptop as the master, even with digital in enabled. So let's go over the proper way to sync them together. The only way to be able to transfer digital audio between two BR1600s while they're synced via MIDI is for the audio to go from the master to the slave. Connect a coax cable from the digital out of the master to the digital in on the slave. On the slave machine, go to Utility, System and set Digital In Assign to Submix. A digital in lock message will appear. For monitoring, all the audio will run to the slave. So use either headphones or a set of powered monitors connected to the line out on the slave. The transport controls on the slave will work independently of the master when in stop mode. But once play is pressed on the master, the two machines will sync. The repeat and marker functions on the master will also be synced on the slave. With the digital in on the slave set to submix, all audio from the master is routed directly to the output of the slave. This means it will bypass the master fader and it will have no effect on the incoming digital signal. You can essentially mute all the audio on the slave without having to adjust or mute any of the individual faders.
It also means that you can't record or add any effects to the input, but this is perfect for monitoring while you record tracks across the two machines. Recording to the master is done exactly as it would be when using it as a standalone machine. For the slave, use the input source buttons to select the desired source and the arm buttons below the tracks to enable them for recording. Press the record button on the slave and as soon as you press play on the master, the slave will go into play mode and with the record buttons armed, will also start recording. To get the maximum amount of 16 tracks for recording, press the multi-track source on both machines and ensure that all the track arm buttons are red. Press record on the slave and then press record and play on the master. This will record to all 16 tracks simultaneously. To be able to record the output from the master for either mixing or bouncing to the slave, going to utility, system and set digital in assign from submix to input. Set the input source on the slave to stereo and turn off the insert effects if they are on. Use the input level control to adjust the input recording volume. The input source buttons are off by default in bounce mode, but you can still enable them. Digital audio is now routed from the master to inputs 1 and 2 on the slave and can be assigned to record to any available pair of tracks or be included in a bounce along with audio from the slave. Regardless of the tempo and bar settings on the slave, it will always run in perfect sync with the master. This can be confusing as you can end up having different bar locations showing on the two recorders. Any tempo settings you make on the master, you should also duplicate on the slave. This way they will both be on the same page, so to speak. Transferring audio from the slave can also be done via the analog outputs, but this is a less desirable option as it is a lossy transfer and uses up two of the inputs on the master. To use the analog connection, run cables from the RCA lineout on the slave to the quarter inch inputs of seven and eight on the master. Enable multi-track as the input source on the master and set the input sensitivity controls for input 7 and 8 to 12 o'clock. Set the input level control to the 12 o'clock position. Set the input pan control for input 7 and 8 to hard left and hard right. All of the audio from the slave will now be recorded to track 7 and 8 on the master and can be included along with audio from the master in a bounce. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions on syncing the BR1600, please leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you next time.